Profile Pod TV. I'm your host, back again. I'm Double A here for another spectacular episode of the pod, man. And we got another dandy one for you in store tonight, man. As you can see, we got our, our special guest here of the evening. Uh, before we get into our special guest and start things off, I just wanted to mention uh, a couple things. Don't forget to subscribe to Profile Pod TV on YouTube. Support the show, support the cause, support Double A, your man. Um, so don't forget to do that. Also, don't forget to leave me a rate review on Apple Podcast. Uh, shoot me a DM. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter, Clubhouse, all that good stuff. Um, once again, I want to thank everybody for all the support out there, man. Everybody's been so supportive, and that's what it's all about because um, I, I, I aim to please the audience and, and create content and a, a fabulous show, man. I, I want to entertain. That's my goal, so... Um, it's really great to be here back on the pod. So without with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into tonight's guest. This gentleman hails out of Harlem, New York City. He's a music producer, master engineer, a sound designer. He's the CEO of Mad Bull Productions, and uh, he has his own studios. You can see, I think he's in there right now. Uh, he has the best ears in the business, ladies and gentlemen. He's worked with some big, big names. For example, Wiz Khalifa, KRS-One, Fat Joe, Too Short, Chef Ray Kwan. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, Wyclef Jean, he was on the Sway in the Morning show and uh, just just uh, has done a plethora of things in the industry. And it's a huge, huge honor to have him here, right here on first time on Profile Pod TV. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, my man, Big French. How you doing, boss? What up, bro? How you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good, man. It's a ple pleasure having you here. How's everything out in uh, Harlem today, man? Everything's good. The weather's turning nice, and, uh, you know, people are outside. You know what I mean? You know, we was in indoors for a whole year. <laughs> Tell me about it, brother. Yeah, we're, we're out here in L.A., and, uh, yeah, like you said, Things are starting to open up today. As a matter of fact, the state opened up officially, so which is kind of cool, right? Things are getting back to normal. People are just out there, and life. Just you know, it's it's great to have life back to normal, man. Right. At least getting back that way. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. And it's a huge step going back. Uh, is it is it pretty warm out there in in, in uh, New York City today? Extremely warm. Like being the nineties this week. You oh. know what I mean? So it's all good. You know what I mean? Some sun. The women are outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's never a bad thing, right? That's never no, a bad thing. No. Yeah, no, no doubt, man. Yeah, it's, it's pretty warm out here too, man. I think it's in the mid-90s as well. So, you know, we're heading in that direction of the summertime, man. So, uh, yeah, yeah, man, I, I want to thank you once again for being here, uh, Big French. No, no, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. No, no, it's, uh, you know, uh, I'm really impressed with your body of work, man. You've done a lot of big things in this business, and and uh, I know you've been producing. But uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Over 20 years now, right? About 20, 20 years. About that. No doubt, man. No doubt. And we're gonna get into your story and everything, man. And by the way, I was watching your the debut episode today of uh, of my of you on and and, and Mark and uh, uh, Nicole. Nicole Porter and and Mike, of course, on the new show. And that man, that was a Really, really cool episode, man. Right. Dave show. Congratulations on that. Yeah, more of that, more of that coming very soon. I bet, man. I bet. Yeah, Mike. Mike came on here, man. We had a great time, and but uh, yeah, yeah. That's so, my brother, Mike Powers. Shout out to Mike Powers. That's my brother. Mike Powers is is a special man, man. That, that guy, he's a very talented individual, and very, talented, very smart, very you know, and and he's a he's a good guy all around. You know what I mean? No and doubt, he's a rare one. You don't bump into those kind of people all the time. No, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, we were talking earlier. It's just you, you come across people in life, and sometimes you just hit it off, and then things just move so quickly because the chemistry and right. the dynamic is so powerful. That's exactly what happened with us. Like, we're all, like I said, uh, we're all, like, relatively new friends, and the chemistry was just so crazy and Mike had the wherewithal to be like, yeah, we need to put this shit on camera. And <laughs> that's kind of what it is. And like I said, it's more about our chemistry more than 
trying to tell a story or tell gossip or any crazy shit like that. Like, we just want to give the people our vibe. Because our vibe is so good. Like, people need to see that shit. Yeah. No, it's definitely a special vibe, man. And, you know, I, I, you, you want, yeah, you want to capture that, capture that magic. And I feel it, man. I feel it. But it, uh, it's going to be nice to see where, where that show goes, man. And, but Big French, man, let's take it back to kind of like the, the, to the beginning, man. Kind of, you know, how, how did this journey start for you, man, as, as a music producer? Um, you know, my journey started in probably 1992 when I graduated from the Institute of Audio Research to become an engineer. Like once I graduated from there, that's when it was like, cause I mean, going to that school for me was the cheat code. You know what I mean? Because I was already kind of producing, but you know, around that time, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? If I learned how to be an engineer, I can make my beat sound better. Mm. And that was my whole motivation. And then like, once I got into it, it was like, you know what? I can make a living out of this, <laughs> you know? And yeah. you know, I was still young, you know what I'm saying? 92, I was still young, I was about 20 years old. And, uh, you know, and it was it was a, a nice way to go to kind of avoid like the street life. No doubt, man. So go. Some of those and that, and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, you grew up in uh, New York City? Harlem? Grew up in Harlem. Grew up at home, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was uh that's how was that, man? Growing up in, in New York City, man. I mean I Well, Harlem is unlike any other place in the world, first of all. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's there's other boroughs in New York City that make up New York City, but Harlem is a special place because it's the smallest borough. So a lot of us here in Harlem, we all know each other, we grew up with each other. So there's that that camaraderie, that closeness that you have with a person, with like the whole block, you feel that way about, you know what I'm saying? Where like, I came up at a time where, you know, other people's parents had a hand in raising you and how you would conduct yourself in the street, you know? Like you didn't wanna, you didn't wanna curse around, you know, Miss Mamie, or you didn't wanna curse about around Miss Johnson because she'd run back and tell your grandmother and then they're in trouble, you know what I'm saying? So. You know, it kept us in check, in a way. You know what I'm saying? It kept us respectful, things of that nature. Yeah. Definitely, man. Definitely. And you know, I have a lot of respect for New York City. I love everything about New York City, man. I've been there uh, once. I was there back in 2010, and uh, truly enjoyed my my little you know five days there, man. I, the one thing I really loved about it, man. Is I, you know, come from LA, you don't have to drive anywhere, man. I was I was in that subway, man. That subway was beautiful, man. <laughs> you said beautiful. Uh, like uh, people, people in New York hate the subway. <laughs> like uh, I, I haven't taken a train in a, in a few years. You know what I'm saying? Just because like once you like buy a car, it's like, man, fuck that train, fuck that bus. Like I never take the bus though. If I gotta take mass transit, I'm taking the train. Because yeah. buses, buses got to stop for stops and lights. And I'm impatient. <laughs> I want to get hurry up and get there. You know what I'm saying? But the subways is hot, semi-dangerous, and sometimes it's packed. Well, pre-COVID, it used to be packed. Where you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, right up on a person. And you know what I'm saying? That's never comfortable. So yeah. it's like, let me just get a car. And then I, I, I checked my Uber bill one day. And I'm like, you know what? As much money as I spent on Uber, I could just buy a fucking car. And that's what I did. You know what I'm saying? There, there you go, man. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, shout out to Uber, because Uber's a wonderful thing. Uber? Yeah, love it. Yeah, man, yeah, you know. But you, it, going back to what you were saying, man, about, you know, the the, the, the neighbors and the, and the, you know, somebody's grandparents kind of, everybody's kind of raising the, the, the neighbor's kids. And I think it's, I appreciate that closeness of New York City, man. Right. You guys were kind of uh, here in uh, you know LA. We're kind of in we're in tract homes. We're kind of spread out a little bit more, but there is like every everybody kind of knows each other's kids, families, and stuff like that. And you grow up together, and, and it's like it's a closeness. It's like you had like the privilege of growing up having multiple parents. Like your whoever your best friends were, their parents were your parents when you were over at their house. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was always that like you know. You know you're close with a person, you can just walk in the house and go in the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? That that, that determines a lot. 
No doubt, no doubt. How, how close were you to, uh, or are you to Rucker Park? Um, I'm in what you would call South Harlem. So high is what they want, is what the gentrifiers want to change it to, but that'll never happen. <laughs> you said it's so high? Right, they want to call it so high and, and no high. That's a no <laughs> go. That's never going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But the gentrifiers, you know, came to Harlem and they kind of moved in with the kind of attitude that they belong here and that they can do what they want and start changing names of things and moving shit around. Like, but that's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? They're going to they're gonna have a fight before that happens. No doubt, man. No, that, that goes back generations, right? I mean, right. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm what they call old Harlem. You know what uh, I mean? Old school, huh? Yeah. Yeah, man. So, so I don't mind, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of dudes that I grew up with aren't here on this earth anymore. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have a problem with being the big homie or the unk, as the young kids say, whatever. It doesn't bother me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No doubt. The OG, as they say out here. Mm -hmm. The veteran. I don't oh. know. Right, right, man. Hip hop keeps you young. <laughs> it does, man. Hip hop keeps you young. Like, if you want to stay young forever, be involved in hip hop in some way. Definitely. Definitely, man. You know? Uh, so, when did you discover your love for music? French. Um, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. It's, it's actually kind of funny. Like, as a kid growing up, um, when my moms would put me on punishment, right? She'd be like, you know, go to your room, stay in your room, and you can't go outside. But I had a Casio keyboard, a really big, noisy-ass keyboard, right? So I'd go in there, pissed off, and i start making a bunch of fucking noise. But my mother, being smart as she was, she would just ignore that shit. And eventually, I got tired of hearing noise. So I learned how to, like, I would play the things that I heard on the radio. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was, that was like my practice. OK. So, so eventually, I got good at the shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm self-taught when it comes to keyboards and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? From young, because like I said, I was in there in my room on punishment for doing some dumb shit. And I'm in there with the keyboard. And after a while, after an hour, banging on the keys, trying to make my mother mad to send me outside. I get tired of hearing that shit. So I'm trying to make music now. And it, it became addictive. Yeah. How old were you at, at, during, these, during this time? How old were you? Probably. I'm probably like you know, my early teens, you know, 11, okay. 12, you know. So you start picking up that, uh, you start getting better at the keyboard then. Right. So then I'm, now I'm playing like whole songs and shit. And then um, my older brother, his name is Rich Nice, you know, from the X Track Masters, was the first rapper signed to Motown. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And uh, he was into production. And, you know, I was already DJing, and that's usually a producer's first step. They usually, uh, most producers were DJs first. And I'm like, yep. you know, in my early teens, early to late teens, I'm, I'm the hood DJ. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I in the block parties and I'm in, you know, basketball games, shit like that. So the next step for me was production. So I'm starting to make beats for my homies. You know what I'm saying? I'm using like, back then I'm using like a cassette with a Casio S1 sampler. And this thing had no features. Like, in the, you, could, you know, you couldn't even put a line into a sample. It was just like, speak it to Mike. So, you know, the sample sounded terrible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we didn't care. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We were young and we just was amazed that we could actually make music. You know? Yeah. All, yeah. You know, so then I went to school. For, I went to the Institute of Audio Research. So once I left there, I started working in a studio called Noise in the Attic in Midtown Manhattan. And there I met DJ Duop from Duop and the Bounce Squad. I'm engineering for him, I'm engineering for a bunch of other people. And then in 1995, it's like, I'm doing a lot. Like I'm engineering at the studio. I get my first placement with KRS-One in 95 and Doo-Wop drops a mixtape that later goes on into Hip Hop Hall of Fame called 95 Live. Remember that? 95 Live, that sounds familiar. Yeah, but the thing about this mixtape is it had an intro that was a half an hour long. 
and everybody who was anybody at the time was on there spitting a freestyle. We talking Wu Tang, Buster, Q Tip, Guru, okay. God, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was on this mixtape mm. and on this intro. And I think it was the first mixtape to go like mixtape platinum. You know what I'm saying? It was just yeah. a really, that was a good summer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. And so that, was, that was like, the for me, for my career, that was the spark. That from that point on, I think just kind of took yeah, off. Yeah, because I engineered Doo-Wop and the Bounce Squad simultaneously mm. getting my first production placement with KRS-One. Wow. So now, you know, I'm an established producer and I'm an established engineer the same year. Wow. Yeah, that, no, that's some unbelievable, man. So, so uh, from that point on, what was kind of your next, um, I mean, your next project or gig that uh, you could remember? You remember? Um, after Karis won, um, oh man, I was just doing a lot of engineering and just getting my yeah. chopped up with that. I mean, not putting the production to the side, but I was still doing production. But at the time, I wasn't getting any placements. Uh, there was a time, this was back when the record companies were still like thriving and the kind of the rule of thumb was that at, at that time, like all the production went to the big boys, like Premier, Pete Rock, you know, they wasn't coming, they wasn't really checking for the underground production producers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, well fuck that. I can do this engineering thing in the meantime. And that's what I was doing, you know, you know getting my chops up. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. Uh, so who were some of your early hip hop influences Big French, so like 15 year old Big French, who, who are you listening to back then, man? 15 year old Big French, I'm listening to Rock Him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Being Rock Him, huh? Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's probably around that time. Uh huh. Let's see. Yeah, probably Rock Him. Anyway, we talk about influences, so we like Rock Him, Karis One, you know mm. what I'm saying? I was always heavy into like bars, you know what I'm saying? And at that time, like growing up in hip hop, the bars didn't really start until around that time. You know what I'm saying? The, before that, the rhymes were still like sing song, you know what I'm saying? Real predictable rhymes, you know what I'm saying? Cat, hat, uh -huh. fat, sack rhymes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Rakim to me was the first one to kind of bend the rules on the, on the format of rap. You know what I mean, he changed the game because after that, now everybody want to be lyrical. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had, uh, kind of. Then uh, you, you know, De La Soul comes in and, and yeah, uh, Daisy Age and all that. And I was a fan of uh, like the Jungle Brothers. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? They were Daisy Age, but they still had flow with raps and bars. You know what I mean? Right, right. You know, they were like the street, street version of De La Soul. I'm sorry, say it again. Jungle Brothers were more of a street version of, of De La Soul to me. Yeah, <laughs> Jungle Brothers, man. <laughs> what, did you ever get into uh, uh, EPMD? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Eric, Eric Sermon is probably one of the most unsung producers in the game. Like, he deserves way more props as a producer, I think, because his beats are fucking crazy. And one of my favorite songs in hip hop is music. Yeah. By yeah. Eric Thurman. Like that shit is just a beautiful fucking record. Like anytime, any place, that record can play and it gives you that, you know, this shit is dope feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. He he was the producer for e EPMD or did they kind of go back to him and Parrish couldn't kind of go back and forth? I think it was between EPMD and probably their producer Scratch. Mm -hmm. I mean, that DJ Scratch. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure he got had a, a lot of hand in their production as well. But I'm thinking a lot of it was Eve, was Eric. Uh, Eric. Yeah, man. That's uh, and then you know, what about Public Enemy? And, and then uh, you know, oh, Eve, of course, came Public in. Public Enemy, like, like the when they had like everything had their era, and each era was just dope, like. Like Public Enemy kind of falls in like the Black Power era when everything was like the the African medallions and yep. you know what I'm saying like Public Enemy and like man I miss X Clan. Oh 
Exactly. Brother Jay was like that group. I had the kids like just proud to be black. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. They made you feel a certain way, those records. Like, when you heard Brother Jay talk about all that African stuff, and like, you may not have known what he was talking about, but it, <laughs> it made you want to go search that. Like, if you felt like, yo, like, we were really kings at one time? We were kings? Okay. Like, you know? And that's great for a kid to have that feeling. You know what I mean? That like, we are more, or we are worth more than what society puts on us. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, man. No, I remember that. Frenchie, I remember the, those years, man, the early, the late 80s, early 90s, man, and yeah, yeah movies like uh, Do the Right Thing and, um, you, know, you know, Chuck D and, and, and Public Enemy coming out with some Fight the Power and right. uh, New Jack City and, uh, yeah, there was definitely a lot of pride here on the West Coast as well, man, that was, that was, uh, it was, a, it was a hip-hop thing, obviously, yeah, and, uh, but yeah, man, it was, uh, man, man, I'm so envious, man, because, you know, you grew up in New York City, man. That's the mecca, man. That's the mecca of hip hop, you know. And you had all this, all this stuff going on. You had all these artists. You had, I mean, just movies being made. Just uh, you know, down the line, even you know, going all the way back to the Beat Street. I mean, you know, it's just uh, it's it's amazing, man. It's what, what happened out there? It was beautiful, man. Like, and I'm glad to say, like, I was there for a lot of that shit. I mean, like. A lot of it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely, man. And now, now you got, I mean, I, it's, I was, it's safe to say, oh, it's almost every country in the world has got some, some, you know, lyricists now, man. I mean, oh, yeah. now, right now, like, is, it's like hip hop is global thing. It's not just a New yeah. York thing, a United States thing. It's around the world. You can, you can spin the globe and close your eyes and pick a country, and it's going to be a hip hop scene there. Yeah, you just got you just got to know where to look. Uh huh. It's there because I bumped I bumped into Russian rappers, African rappers, Italian rappers, French rappers, Japanese rappers, like the whole gambit, bro. Incredible, man! Incredible. Um, speaking of Russian, I think uh, my man, what is it, Trilla? Traumatic. Traumatic, right? Uh, he just did a joint with G4 Jag. Mm -hmm. He's rapping in Russian. That's incredible, man. That's incredible. Here, here's the thing. A lot of it don't even have to have to do with what the words, if you understand them or not. But you know a flow, if it's a good flow or not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it has nothing to do with the words. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If he's, if he's in pocket and riding that beat the right way, it doesn't matter what the fuck he's saying because <laughs> it's still gonna sound sonically well to the ear. Absolutely, one hundred percent, man. Yeah, you, exactly. You hit it on the head. It uh, there's a fluidity to it, right? Right. It has to flow a certain way. Yeah. You know, those syllables you may not understand the words, but those certain syllables and vowels gotta land on the big beat in certain places, and rap and rhyme. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. supposed to be a rap. Yeah, right, right. Hey, man, I want to ask you, man, what, what was it like to work with some of these big time artists, man? Like, for example, uh, you know, Chef Raekwon, man, what was he like in the studio? Talk about that a little bit. Um, well, the one time I was in the studio with Raekwon, the chef, <coughs> um, they were doing 95 Live. Oh. You know what I mean? And they came in, it was like this. And, and, and 95, this was like, Wu Tang's like heyday. So yeah. it was a thousand of these motherfuckers in the studio. <laughs> it was crazy. And, but you know, everybody was there to work. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't take too long. Like, and they figured out which Wu Tang members were gonna actually be on the freestyle. And then everybody else left. And then they sat down. I played the beat over and over and over while they wrote to it. And then they got in the booth. They did their bars. A couple of takes, not not long. It wasn't all night. And they left. And that was yeah. their part on 95 Live. I mean, it was dope yeah. just to be in the room with those guys. Because, you know, I'm young. And I'm like, yo, this is Wu Tang. All of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> was, there, was there a little bit of a, an intimidation factor on your part? As far as not so much intimidation, kind of maybe like a nervousness, like a kind of a... Of course, of course. I mean, remember in 95, I only been out of school three years. 
You know what I'm saying? I graduated in 92, so I'm still fairly new at this shit. I'm still learning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this is back. 95 was the year the world went digital. You know, before that, it was like ADATs and DA88s and shit like that. And some studios were still using real to real. And then one day, you didn't need none of that shit. Uh. And it, it, was, it was like, you know, the owner of the studio was like, hey, it's going right into the computer. I'm like, word? Oh, wow, that's going to change the game. And then it did. Yeah. Uh, everybody with a Pro Tools set up, they're an engineer now. Absolutely, man. You're, you're talking about 95, Frenchie, a lot, man. And for me, that I was uh, I was in the Navy. I was nine, uh, 19 years old. And, uh, I mean, that was the year, like you said, that was Wu-Tang's heyday. And then you had Tupac at the t- top of his game. You had, uh, you know, Biggie. You had, uh, I mean, all kinds of artists, man. I mean, De La Soul, uh, Tribe was doing their thing. You had, uh, man, I can't, I can't even think. There's, there's so yeah. many artists that were... In, the, in 95, the energy right. of hip-hop was so crazy. Like, everything was happening, and everything that was coming out was just so dope. You know what I mean? It was just like, everything was just like on point, like right at that moment. Like, 95 was just one of those years where everything was aligned, and the fucking energy was perfect, and everybody involved was just at their peak. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, you, you know, on the West Coast, you had Dre doing their thing, and... Right. This thing, Snoop, and, and you know, you know, uh, um, Dog Pound, right? Short was coming out with stuff. E forty, I mean, just it, it, man, what a beautiful time it was. It was a bananas, bro. It was like I missed them times because it was like like shit that was going on at the time. Even then, you knew you knew like, like this kind of shit is never gonna happen again. <laughs> right, I, I know. It, it, yeah, I mean, or sometimes you maybe I was, you know, you feel if you, you don't really think like too far down the line. Yeah, you don't, you don't, yeah, we, you, you don't know if this is going to happen again, like you said, or you know, maybe we thought, oh, this is going to be like a, a common thing going forward. I don't know. Uh, I I don't know. I'm weird like that. I be knowing shit. Like they call me <laughs> they call me French Nadamus on the low. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I was looking around at the world in '95, like, yo, this shit is so dope. It's never gonna happen again, and it didn't, and it still has. <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, no, but I wish, I hope, like, the work we're doing now will like mean to the world as much as the work that we did in '95 would mean. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think like, like. Not to change the subject, but like Lord Mob, like these guys I'm working with now, they got a got a, a stranglehold on the industry right now. And it's this is a good time for us. You know what I mean? I've seen uh, uh, um, some of the artists, uh, you know, Lord Mob and um, the, the, who, the general, my, my, what's the uh, Flea? Flea Lord. Flea Lord, right? Oh, man, he's uh, just phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. Right. Yeah. Absolutely, man. No, I, you guys, they're doing some great, great work, man. And it's, it's uh, like you said, yeah, hopefully it can be as epic as it, as you know, we're talking about 95 and in the not mid nineties. Uh, and I believe that they're going to talk about the work I've did with Law Mob like forever. You know what I mean? Because the way this company moves is, there's nothing new under the sun. So I won't say it's never been done but it hasn't been done like this in a long while. Yes. I mean, like where a company is gathering people and art artists from all over the country and kind of making it one super team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. It, it, the hip hop industry uh, right now is, is it, it's a, uh... Talk about that a little bit, Frenchie. I mean, uh, tell us a little, put, put, put me up on game, man. It's, it's evolving, uh, it's, um, right? It's, it's gonna always evolve. It's, it's totally 100% different than it was. And let's say like back in the day, like when rec- record companies had the reins on everything, because now we're in a deep, you know, DIY world, do it yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying where everybody's kind of like, 
You go out and you spend $1,500 on a Mac, you got a studio in a box. <laughs> exactly. And you buy a mic to go with that. And you can spend under five grand and have a, a nice studio in your crib. You know what I'm saying? And this is where we at with it. Mm. Walk around with a studio in your nap stack. You know what I'm saying? That's where we at with technology. And if you know what you're doing and you teach yourself or go to school, go to school. But you know what I'm saying? There's been a lot of people that have been teaching themselves. And like, I wish they had YouTube back in the day when I was growing up. I'd be a trillionaire by now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like all the free information on fucking YouTube, kids, you better take advantage. Man. That shit goes away tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yo, I had it. It was right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. And uh, I, I kind of, I want to go back to kind of the artists you've worked with, man. Uh, what was uh, Black Thought? Oh, shit. working with, man. Listen, shout out to Rich Nice, my brother Rich Nice. He had, he brought, he sent Black Thought to my studio. He had to do something for the Tonight Show. I'm not whatever show that the boots were on. And he had to spit a verse or something that he had another studio to go to. So of course, he comes here. And uh, he was super chill. You know what I'm saying? He came in, he was very humble. And in my mind, I'm kind of geeking in my mind, like, yo, that's motherfucking black thought in that <laughs> whole studio, in my motherfucking studio. So in my mind, I'm like, yo. <laughs> right? Let's go. Yes. So he comes in, I play the beat. He gets in the zone, and he's writing. About 15, 20 minutes later, he's like, all right, I'm ready. He gets in the booth, I record him. I remember it was one take. Wow. He laid it down, he laid down his leads, he laid down his ad libs. He was done and out the door. He, he said, yo, email it here, I'm out. And he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But I did. Yeah. I, I was able to take one picture with him before he left. Is that it? Yeah, so on my gram. Big French MVP on the gram. Go see that. You have to scroll down a little bit. It was, it was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, I got it. And, and he, you, you worked with him on just that one time? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. That, yeah, stuff like that just. Fascinates me, man. Yeah, I mean, just the one take and that, I mean, just, that was it, huh? Just one take and it was that good, out the door. Nailed it. Yeah. And for those of the, of the of you not familiar with Black Thought, he's uh, from the roots, right? Yeah, if you don't know who Black Thought is and you call yourself being a part of hip hop, you might want to go do some studying. <laughs> he is an incredible fucking rapper. I mean, out of this world. Gosh. Philadelphia, PA, right? Huh? Uh, the, the roots from Philadelphia, right? I want to say. Yeah, I think so. From from Philly, yeah. And wow, man, yeah. And it's who's uh, name it one more artist, uh, Frenchie, who who was an absolute pleasure to work with, man. Who can you tell us? Uh, what, give us one more artist that you you know really enjoyed working with. In the God bless, the God bless the dead, my bro, Black Rob. Mm. He was my boy. You know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, he did his last album here, um, Genuine Article. Really? Yeah. Wow, talk about that experience, man. Um, I know, I knew Rob since the uh, Woe days. You know what I'm saying? I've known him a while. So, you know, I've been yeah. working with him like off and on since I met him, you know what I mean? But then okay. when we did the album, um, Genuine Article, it was like, you know, he wasn't with, he wasn't with a uh, bad boy anymore. He wasn't with duck down. He was just kind of independent. So he was like, fuck it. Let's just do an album independent. You know what I'm saying? Put it out ourselves. And that's kind of what we did. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Wow. Gosh. And, wh and when was that last time? Uh, when was he in your, in, your, in your studio last? Um, He was in my studio last around the time we did that album. Like, unfortunately, like, um, some people know, some people don't. Like, he had his first stroke in my studio. 
Wow. Yeah. And I was the guy that took him to the, to the hospital. You know? Yeah. I don't even like to tell people that, that I was the one that took him to the hospital because I know what the doctor told me. There was a lot of rumors about him being on drugs and that sort of thing. And the doctor told me he had zero drugs in the system when I brought him in. Yeah. Like, I just would like, you know, I don't like to hear, you know, industry rumor shit, it's, it's whack. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's like, why, you know, he's gone now. So there shouldn't be no reason to even talk bad on him. Of course, of course, man. Rest in peace, yeah, no doubt, man. He was a good dude at the end of the day. So that's that on Black Rob. Man. That's my dude. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and so what kind of equipment do, you, uh, do they still make those SP, SP, uh, SP 1200s? SP 1200s? Yeah, they still make them. They still, well, they, I, I mean, I don't know if they still make them. I know they still sell them. Like, you know, like I've seen a couple people come up on them, like on eBay or little uh, music uh, equipment sites and things of that nature. I'm not sure if they still actually physically make them. But, but there's people, still, you, you can still they're still circulating. It's people still using them. Like to shout, out, shout out to Easy Mo B. I see him on his uh, Instagram lives. He's doing like he like remakes the beats that he made back in the days. Uh huh. He does it on SP. And it's fucking incredible. Wow. <laughs> uh huh. I, I you know what? As long as I've been in the production, I never really got with that machine. I didn't like it because the the buttons are hard, and if you tap on them just long enough, you'll get square fingers. <laughs> So I was oh, like, yeah. the MPC pads are nice and soft. You can bang on them shits all day. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get finger fatigue and shit like that. Right, right. No doubt, man. No doubt. I was I was watching your uh, appearance on the on Big uh, Sway in the morning. Sway is the homie. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a cool appearance, man. Wait, was that in New York City? Yeah, uh, downtown Manhattan. Downtown Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Man. Thanks to COVID, I don't think they're doing that anymore. I think they're doing remote shows, like everybody's home or wherever they are, and they kind of send a camera crew over to your house and do it there. Oh, I see. I, see. I don't know if they're back in the studio yet, but I know at the end of the month, they're supposed to be lifting the whole mask uh, man, the mandate. So yeah, we won't have to, won't be required to wear a mask every fucking way no more. Because yeah. I know. Um, I think today they said like New York is like seventy five percent vaccinated. Wow, yeah, shit. It, it seems like uh, it's almost like who's not vaccinated now? Shit. No, I, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that, bro. I'm not doing that. I feel you, man. I'm right there. Listen, I trust my immune system before I trust that bullshit that they're giving out to people. Oh gosh. Yeah, you know, God forbid in five, you know, three to five years or whatever, God forbid, you know, start seeing, uh, you know, but that's a whole different conversation. Right? Man, man, oh man, it's Chevis, man, don't get me started. Because I'm one <laughs> of those, I'm one of those conspiracy theorists that they call us, you know what I'm saying? But it's all a conspiracy. Yep. It's always a conspiracy until the shit happens. Right. Then it's, oh man, we should have listened to you. <laughs> Late now. You fucking growing an eyeball out your armpit. Now what? What kind of vaccine? And listen, I'm going to just say this. I don't know if any of you people used to watch um, zombie movies. How do they make zombies all the time? They always come from a bad vaccination. Oh, gosh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Even down to the one, what's that, that joint that um, Will Smith did? Oh, the, uh, the um, gosh, you mean uh, the movie? Yeah. Men in Black? Nah, 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 nah. More newer than that. Oh, man. He did a, a zombie movie. Oh, you got me, man. Um, shit. Yeah. Yeah, well. I can't think of it right now. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll look it up, man. We'll look it up, man. Hey, hey Frenchie, in your opinion, man, what, what makes a good... Music producer, man. What, what what are some key components one one must possess to be a good quality music producer, man? Good ears. Mm. I mean, imagination. Like, you know, 
you gotta sometimes be willing to step outside the boundaries when you're making your beats. I hear a lot of stiff beats, a lot of shit that sounds very microwave, a lot of shit that sounds very stiff. Like, don't be afraid to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Of course. It, it, you can... And and I, I don't say that to try to put anybody down. I mean, there's a lot of I've been hearing a lot of good beats as well as not so good beats. I've been hearing a lot of good shit. A lot of producers out there that are doing their fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it comes with the territory. You got your good you guys and your bad guys. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like anything, right? Right. Like anything. And then at the end of the day, it's all it's all opinionated. You know what I'm saying? True, true. Shit I might think it's trash, another person might think that shit's dope. And vice versa. So it's all about opinions and yeah. Everybody's entitled, they say, right? <laughs> What's that? Everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? Right. To each his own. And uh, but, but uh, I like what you said, man, about production, man. Uh, I think it was on respect the beat on that clip. And uh, someone asked you what you like most about production. You said, like, when an artist starts with an empty, you described it uh, when, you know, when an artist starts with an empty canvas, you know, a producer starts with a silent room, right? right? And, and, and fills it with music. And then the, the end process, the end, or the end result is uh, the final product. And when, you, when you're sitting back and you're bobbing your head, you're listening to your, what you just produced, right. I mean, that, that's the juice for you, right? Yeah, that, that's a, that is an undescribable, awesome feeling. You know what I'm saying? When you come into a room, you don't know, I mean, I know, me anyway, when I come into the room to produce, I have no fucking clue what's about to happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting with an empty canvas. I'm starting with a silent room. And then I start tapping around, playing certain keys, going through certain samples, digging digging through crates and shit like that. And by the time I'm done, a lot of times, I mean, some a lot of times with me anyway, there's a blackout moment. Like I'm searching through samples and then the beat's done. And I'm trying to remember, and I don't remember even like putting the drums to that or the bass line to that. Like that just that just happened. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Kind of, you know, it's like that's when you're in the moment so much, you're not even paying attention to you're in like automatic mode. You're doing shit, but you're not really paying attention to what you're doing. That's when you're like channeling some other, you know, intelligence at that point. You know what uh, I mean? That's what yeah. I, I believe. You know what I'm saying? No doubt, no doubt, yeah, yeah. And a lot, I know a lot of my best music comes out that in that process. Mm. You, you just get into that zone, huh? You just... Right. You're not really paying attention to it. You're, you're grooving to whatever it is going on in the room. And you're just like, you know, you're getting engulfed with the, with the fucking ideas. Wow, man. So when an artist, before an artist comes in, French, uh, you know, you you don't you don't have you don't you know, kind of visualize or you don't have you just you kind of space out you're, you're not, you don't have an idea of what you're gonna do or you, like you said it's just kind I, of nah, when I come in when I when I come in this room and I and I got production on my mind I don't try to pre think about what's gonna happen I just let it happen and you know I might be feeling like jazz that day or I might be feeling like an R and B mode I might be feeling I'll do a rock beat, you know what I'm saying? It's just depending on how I feel that day. You know what I'm saying? There's right. no telling, because I'm not just stuck in hip hop. I love hip hop, it's my birth. Hip hop raised me. It's more of a religion to me than a music, mm. you know, culture. It's a, my religion, like I believe in hip hop. Absolutely. You know what I'm so, because I walk it, I talk it, I live it every day. I wear my hat to the side, that's hip hop. <laughs> All day, forever, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> when it comes to this beat shit, you just gotta kind of embrace the moment because you never know what's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? And you're not gonna always knock it out the park. You know what I'm saying? I, there's been times I've spent hours on a beat and then just to put it in the trash. Like, nah, that ain't it. Uh -huh. You know, but you know when it's it. You know, it gives you that fucking feeling like somebody's. You know, spark the fire in your chest. You're like, oh shit, that's it. Yeah. You know? And that, those beats are called no brainers. <laughs> Anybody who hears it is gonna like it or wanna rap to it. 
Right. You know? I get you, man. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. You, you just know, man. You just know when you... It sounds like you're a perfectionist too, though, right? I Absolutely. Think. I mean, not to like an asshole, can, you know, not, not to be an asshole about it, but yeah. I, I have set certain standards for myself. You know, through the years. Now I it has to sound a certain way for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So however long that may take, you know, but I'm also a in very impatient person, so I like to get shit done fast. <laughs> to get on to the next thing. Right. <clears throat> you know, it's like, but I know they say haste makes waste, but I think if you kind of know what you're doing, then why not move at a faster pace? That's how me and Flea got 12 albums done in 12 months, you know, because I work fast and he works fast. Man. Like that wouldn't have happened with the average rapper. No. You know what I'm saying? An album, 10 songs a month for 12 months, that consistency, who's doing that? I mean, they're trying to do it now. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? After <laughs> you've done it already, now it's like, oh, now you want to make 12 albums, Papoos? Now you want to make 12 albums, Mr. Rapper Nobody Knows over there? Like, I hear it all the time. Yo, I'm going to make 12 albums this year. <laughs> we did that already. Man, that's, I forgot about that, man. I forgot about that. That's that's incredible. That's incredible. You produced all 12 and... What, I, didn't, what? I didn't produce all 12. I, I engineered it. I mixed and mastered and recorded all 12. Okay. You know what I mean? I produced songs here and there, but... A lot of those albums were like the entire the whoever producer he decided to work with produced the whole album. Like shout out to Buck Wild, Pete Rock, you know, and DJ Shea, God bless the dead, RIP. You know what I'm saying? Like those three albums alone. Gosh. Havoc, Havoc on uh the last joint for the year was um In the Name of P. Entirely produced by Havoc, and that was well, that's how you go out with a bang <laughs> when you're doing 12 albums for the year. Gosh, that's, an, that's for that's just epic, man. man. <laughs> we're, we're, we're and, up. And, and the features on that one retarded, like you got Buster Rhymes and Ray on the Chef on the same album. Who's doing that? Gosh. Unreal, man. And, and, um, Lord, are you coming out in September, man, for those shows? Um, I would like to. I I gotta see what's going on because tour schedules and studio schedules usually don't match up. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't want to make any promises, but if I can, I will. If I can't, I'll be there in spirit. No doubt, man. No doubt. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm gonna try to go to that. Uh, you know, September Flea Lord, and uh, gosh. That's, that's going to be, yeah, 12 albums in 12, 12 months, man. Phenomenal, phenomenal, man. Yeah, man. So what's next for you, Big French, man? I mean, what, what are some upcoming projects you can talk about? You know, upcoming projects for me is, um, well, I got a project out right now for a reason with Reef Hustle and another album out right now, Linux Hughes. The return to Sugar Ray and Quick. Yeah. Yeah. And for a reason, is is only available on torchville.com. Torchville.com. And the return of Ray and Quick, that's everywhere. That's on every streaming platform. You know what I'm saying? It's out everywhere. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You check those two projects out if you haven't. And then I'm working on currently, you can catch me on the Mike Powers show. You know what I'm saying? I'm a co-host on the Mike Powers show. We released our first um, first episode today. I was that today, man. Congratulations on that debut episode, man. That's fire, man. We get some nice reviews. I can't complain about the reviews we're getting. And, and that was just our first one. You know what I mean? We, we've we just begun this journey, particular journey. And I'm loving the way it's going. And I want to shout out my co-host, Nicole Porter, Mark Q75, and of course, the mighty Mike Powers. It's mm -hmm. my I love those people, you know what I mean? So, you know, we gonna ride with that and see where that goes, where, the, where that truck is taking us, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 
No, that's that's exciting, man. That's exciting. Like I said, man, that, that uh, you guys are capturing some magic on the camera, on film there, and uh, on YouTube. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen that, go check out the Mike Powers show, fully loaded with my man right here, Big French, co-hosting and, uh, you know, creating some magic, making it epic. Why not? Yeah, man. Yeah. I got, I got some, uh, a couple rapid fire questions for you right here, man. Okay. New York Yankees or New York Mets? Yankees. Yankees. New York Knicks or Brooklyn Nets? Nets. Okay, okay. Michael Jackson or Prince? Michael Jackson. Oh. All right, all right. Uh, I would, let me see. Um, Dr. Dre or DJ Quick? DJ Quick. Oh, see, okay. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that, man. I have to agree on that one. I have to agree with you. Quick is dope. Quick is another one of those unsung producers, man. He made some joints. His beats are crazy. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And that Cali sound, like, mm -hmm. this shit is better. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, uh, you hit it, it's right, man. You're right, what else can we say, man? I mean, he's, right. he's, uh, he's got that sound and yeah, it, it's, uh, he's also, you know, you can, you can rap, you can rap too, man. He's a okay, good, yeah, yeah, sure. right? no, no, nothing. He's, he's, he's the whole package. He's one of those rare dudes that can make his own beats and rap. You know what I'm saying? There's not a lot of them out there that do both well. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Right, right. No, it's, uh, yeah, man. So, yeah, I just wanted to throw those questions at you, man. What, what, what last question for you, man, before we wrap things up. Who, who are some uh, influencers in your life, uh, mentors and throughout your life, man? It could be anyone, uh, you know, celebrity. It could be personal friends and family that you would love to sit down with now and have dinner with, man? Uh, my early influences were James Brown. Uh, James Brown, like, I would listen to his music, like, religiously growing up. You know? He's from Harlem, right? James Brown? No. No? He was from the South. Oh, I want to say, why did I think he was from Harlem? Nah, he's not from Harlem. James Brown from the South. I want to say Macon, Georgia. I'm not sure. I can't be quoted on that. But I think he's from Macon, Georgia. Okay. Um, so I listen to a lot of James Brown, Curtis Mayfield, Roy um, Ayers, you know, that sort of music growing up. And that's like my influence as far as like, Production would probably be like, of course, Pete Rock. He's the big homie. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he's a personal friend of mine. Oh, man. Like, I got a lot of respect for that guy, man. Premier, of course. Um, man, this is so many. Um, Karis One is actually a producer, too. Wow. That's the best beats. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he produced, um, they call me Be Nice. You know, uh, uh, um, Lord Jamal is a dope producer. Uh, Another one of our personal friends slash big homies, Lord Jamal. Brand Nubian, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, he produces. A lot of people don't know that. Wow. Man. Yeah, we, yeah, we didn't even get into, I mean, it's just, uh, there's just so many from New York, man. I mean, it's incredible. Too, it's too many to Lord name. Finesse. Lord yeah. Finesse. Lord Finesse. Like, in my mind, Lord Finesse is the originator of the punchline. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of rappers wasn't really throwing out really witty, funny punchlines until Lord Finesse was on the scene. So shout out to him and the whole DITC crew. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Excellent, man. 
Yeah, and I, I, I've just been fortunate in this game, like, to meet and actually be friends with a lot of the people I grew up listening to. You know what I mean? That's cool, man. That's very fortunate in that aspect. I, I can't even imagine, man. It, being, you know, personal friends with Pete Rock. Are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> oh, man. My God. CL Smooth and those well, guys. I, I don't know. I don't know CL. I never met CL, but. Right. Like, Listen, that album or any album by Pete Rock and CL Smooth, just man, that was one duo that should have never broke up in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Like that was that was heartbreaking because a lot a lot of those albums was what kind of I aspired to sound like that. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, like I said, I want my beats to sound like this Pete Rock shit right here. You know what I mean? So, you know, huge influence on me. No doubt, man. Well, man, I wish you nothing but the best of luck, man. I, I can't wait to see what the future holds for you, man. And I wish you nothing but the greatest success. French, you. French, you're welcome, man. Absolutely, man. And you're welcome back here anytime, man. Be before we go, uh, go ahead and plug. Uh, where can the good people follow you, man? What can they, they see? Your, your, um, um, you can catch me on the gram, Big French MVP. You can catch me on the book. Frenchie Hunt, that's my government name. Catch me on 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 anywhere online is is either Big French or Frenchie Hunt. I'm really easy to find. www.madbullproductions.com is my website. Um, SoundCloud SoundCloud.com slash Big French. I got beats up there. I got songs up there. You know, um, you catch me on the Mike Powers show on YouTube. Check his page. We can try to bring you one of those every week as best we can. Oh, okay. I'm saying you're dealing with four different personalities. We all have four different schedules. Yeah. I mean, and we're in different parts of the world with different time zones. <laughs> so right. It's not the easiest thing to make it all come together, but somehow we make it happen. Yep. Exactly. When it's, when it's meant to be, it's, it's supposed to happen. It's going to happen. That's a fact, brother. That's right. That's right, man. Hey, well, thanks again, man. I appreciate you, man. You're, I appreciate your time coming on. And Anytime, man. Anytime. I'll come on back. Absolutely. Let's get you back on, man. And we'll see what the what the future holds for us, man. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. My man, Big French. Go follow him. Go check out his music. Go give him a, a follow. And you will, you will not be disappointed. This man has done some big things. Uh, He's worked with the biggest names in music, R&B and hip hop. And uh, it's a pleasure having him here. Um, thank you once again for tuning in here. If you're on YouTube, if you're on the audio platforms, much appreciation, nothing but love for you. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that purple logo there at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Leave a rate and review. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Clubhouse, and all that good stuff, man. I love getting the feedback. I love getting uh, constructive criticism. <laughs> and uh yeah man it's all good much appreciation nothing but love again we will see you guys next week for my man big french mad bull productions i'm double a your host reminding you to always take it easy Peace.